Coach, what do you make of how the offense performed on Saturday? Uh, it was good to get off to a fast start. I love the way that we executed the opening script. Uh, you know, we continually played physical and played hard with good effort in the first half. We didn't execute at a high, high level, uh, you know, and ended the half again for two weeks in a row with a two-minute situation where we scored a touchdown. So uh, very pleased with the start, very pleased with the two-minute situation before the half. Uh, we had to continue to prove, as Coach would say, to develop our competitive stamina and not relax when we're up 28 to nothing. Uh, they were penalties. It was, you know, we have to coach the technique better and we have to demand the technique better as coaches. Uh, that can't happen. I mean, that was 176 yards, I think, of offense and a touchdown that was that were called back. So that was critical and starts with us as coaches. Is it coincidental that some of those penalties came on Corey Barney's runs or is he so electric sometimes it's tough to know how? Yeah, I think that's just a result of our perimeter blocking. Like we're, we're not very good at perimeter blocking right now. We have to uh, we have to clean that up and we have to improve this week, next week, the next week. Like we're going to need to get the ball in the perimeter to win games this season and to have the big wideouts that we have, that has to be a strong suit for us and it's not right now. And it's not just the wideouts, it's the running backs, it's the offensive line on screens. Like when we get the ball in the perimeter, we have to improve and, and be able to take advantage of that. How was it last year? Uh, we didn't really get the ball on the perimeter as much last year uh, for it to be a glaring, uh, a glaring deal. But uh, as for now, right, it has to improve this year immediately. What do you see? I mean, what, what are you seeing that concerns you? With the perimeter blocking? Yeah. Uh, just the technique where our hands are outside, we're holding, we're not moving our feet. Uh, it's just it's a commitment to uh, a commitment to demanding it daily. And I think that, you know, it, Last week really, really opened our eyes up, which is which stinks because coach you know warns us all the time, don't wait till something happens to fix something. Like we, we, we saw this happening and happening during camp. Uh, we, we failed to fix it as coaches. So we have to get the perimeter blocking right and we're going to. When Jacory got here, how long did it take to realize he can help right away? Uh, pretty quick. I mean, you saw him in the spring game do some things, you know, return kicks, and I mean, he's just so fast and dynamic. Uh, the thing about Ja'Cory uh, is he loves playing football, and that's what you try to recruit to. Uh, like, he genuinely loves to practice. Like, he always has a smile on his face. It's continually recess for him when he's out there on the football field, whether it be a game or whether it be in practice. So I think that that and his, and his ability and his ball skills – uh, speed. I think that just you know, allows him to be a special player. I think hopefully, he only improves each week. You tightened up that running back rotation a little bit more last week. What did you like about just the, the compliments, the compliment, the way those two guys complemented one? Well, I, I think Ramirez does a really nice job. You know, in third downs, catching the ball in the backfield. Obviously, he's got speed. The you know the one touchdown that got called back, like people had angles on him, and he was able to separate and run for 80 yards without getting tackled. So that was good to see. Uh, I love Dante's physicality. Uh, you know, so he had an unblocked defender. He stiff armed, got a first down, <laughs> ran through a guy like we talk about all the time. Just his physicality, physical nature, uh, I think allows him to be a little bit different as well. So I like how both of those guys competed. Both of those guys played. Uh, you know, Gabe got in there at the end uh, and ran the ball really hard. And I think Emmett still gives us a, a, a lot of a, availability on third downs, you know, moving forward. How do you feel about just the overall, like, progress tra trajectory that Dante has taken since he got here when you know he had work to do and, and the patience that, that EJ has had with him to get him not just ready this year but ready early in the year. Yeah, I think I think EJ and, and Coach Ron Brown, you know, in that running back room have done an unbelievable job developing him. Like when he first got here, he hadn't played a lot of football. Uh, you know, trying to learn how we do things, our process. I mean, we try to do really hard things and it's not for everybody. So for him to be able to adapt to how we work every day and what we do, and then develop his skill set as a running back. You know, I think EJ did a really nice job of c continually and still ongoing of developing him into what you see today. And I think he can get better uh, than what you're seeing right now. Coach Rule mentioned the other day, other guys <coughs> needing to match Dylan's intensity. What's that mean? Look like to you going forward, or what's that mean to you? I mean, it just means we're not going to slow down. Like we're not going to slow down and call a game. Uh, past, not passively, but a little less uh, aggressive because Dylan's a freshman. Dylan works his butt off, and you know he can handle a lot of stuff. The other guys around him need to pick it up, and they need to start learning as you know and working as hard as as um, you know certain. Not just Dylan, but we have a couple of guys on offense that you know work their butts off uh, with the film. So we just we're, you know we're pushing our guys just to match, you know really not match. It's the standard like. 
what is our standard on offense of, of you know, opponent study, of learning the playbook, of execution. One of our three pillars is a, a culture of execution, and that's how we got to get. That's that's why we have to demand the standard to get to that level. What do you see from Northern Iowa um, defensively that presents a couple challenges? Uh, very solid. Uh, you know, they're not going to beat themselves. They're not going to put themselves in situations, uh, vulnerable situations. I think they're going to make you try to drive the football for 10, 11, 12 plays, which is really hard to do in football without making a mistake. Uh, so, you know, just being able to consistently execute is what we're challenging our guys. Like, be able to go out there and put 12 plays together without, you know, an MA, because an MA can kill you on offense. You go the wrong way. I saw it the other night. Guy comes free, and it's second and 12, and that's hard to come back from. What have you thought of the way that the offensive line's been firing off the ball, creating those lanes for the backs to run through? Uh, very pleased. Uh, you know, I think they're they're working really hard. I think they take a lot of pride in playing the offensive line position. I think Coach Raiola does an unbelievable job of demanding uh, the certain standard in which they play, and I think it's showing. I think that they're doing a really nice job in the run game. They're doing a really nice job in, in pass protection. Hey, last year, you guys had seven turnovers through two games at the QB position. To, to have none... How, how big has that been just to get off of this kind of start and, and managing the football? It's huge. I mean, the, you know, the, the focus of the whole offseason is taking care of the football, you know, win the turnover margin. And uh, I think that, you know, I think Dylan's done a really nice job of not only protecting the ball in the pocket, but he's throwing balls where either our guy's going to catch it or no one's going to catch it. And I think that's, a, that's, that's maturity beyond his years, uh, the ability to do that. So very pleased to this point. We just have to keep, you know, stressing it and keeping it a focal point. You know, from now and throughout the season. Is that concerning at all that there's a challenge being presented to the veterans to match a true freshman's level of preparation? Is that kind of more say something about them or, or just what Dylan? No, I brought? think it's more of a. It's not a. It's not a. Hey guys, you all. You all are lazy. You're not working hard. They're working extremely hard. I think it's a response to people who ask us, "Are we going to call the game different because Dylan's a freshman?" And the response is no, because he's very prepared. He works really hard. To a point where everybody, you know, he's he's going to raise the standard of preparation around him. Uh, by no means, our guys work their butts off. By no means am I saying that the rest of the offense is lazy and they don't work hard. Like that's not it at all. They're working extremely hard. But but I think it's really cool that you have a freshman quarterback that can raise that standard of hard work that's already been done. What have you seen from Jalen Lloyd through two games in his second year with the program? Uh, got to get him going. It was awesome to see him the other day track that ball, get the deep ball. We almost got him down the sideline, you know, finger, hit his fingertips. So uh, we have to continually get him in the offense and get him going because he's a weapon. I mean, he's put on weight. He's extremely fast. He's got unbelievable balance, ball skills. He can do a lot of different things. So uh, his, his, his role will continue to grow uh, as we continue this season. Hey, Zach, going back to Ja'Cory again, I think it was his first touch of the game. He gets on the sideline, takes a shot, pops up, said nice first down. You see that from a true freshman in that moment in that game. What does that tell you? Uh, it's like I said, it's recess for him. He, he loves it. Like he doesn't feel a thing. You know, I think that that was good because when he got hit, I was like, oh, whoa. And then he hopped up and he's got that big smile on his face. So, you know, we can't put it, we don't want him to get a lot of those hits for sure. But uh, it's fun to watch him when he has the ball in, the hand, in his hands. Anything else, Coach? Awesome. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.